so just uh, quickly about me i have been in real estate i have a real estate license for nine and a half years full time for just over seven years i'm proud member to uh, be serving on the leadership with ypn board for one more year until i turn 40 next year uh i had i i was blessed to serve 100 and just over 170 families uh 75 percent of uh, families that i personally helped are sellers and i have been in the top one fluctuating between top and two top one and two percent of our uh, local mls since 2019 uh just over 70 million in volume sold and i'm passionate about people leadership investing running rugby and of course comedy so i would Greatly appreciate any feedback on my future jokes are appreciated here. So what are we going to cover today? We're going to go over the current market. Uh, we're going to identify who potentially can be the motivated seller. Uh, we're going to be talking about some tools that are free and some that we have to invest in and uh, the ways to contact them. And what's I really going to be sharing everything that's working for me. And then we're going to have a Q&A. So potentially we might go it over past 2 p.m., but bear with me. I'll try to get everything in the next 56 minutes. Sounds good? Sounds great. great. So here are some facts that we really need to understand why we have such a low inventory right now. 92% of Mar Americans have mortgage below 6% right now. 61% are below 4% interest and 23 percent of all americans that have a mortgage are below three percent so one of the key questions is why would someone sell if they have a mortgage at three four or even six percent and get into the new home for seven seven and a half maybe even eight percent that's one of the challenges that i often hear uh now interesting fact is that Unfortunately, we are running out of savings. So in 2020, we had over three trillion uh, on our savings account. In 21, we had 2.5 trillion. In 2022, we had 686 billion, which is the lowest since uh, 2009. And uh, as of April of this year, uh, we increased that to 800 billion in total saving account across the country. Unfortunately, the credit card debt wrecked over a trillion for the very first time in the history. So what is this saying? We really have a habit of spending more than what we earn. And that is what these numbers are, one of the reasons why these numbers are showing. So who, who would be the future sellers is going to be one of the uh, key points that we're going to really tie to these facts so far. Now, Another huge reason why we have struggles with uh, with our activities and it's really the inventory. So these are the stats for the last 10 years in Miami-Dade County. These are the residential properties only. These are the facts that I was talking about and whoever mentioned that there is still slide one, thank you so much. So here are the mortgage facts that we covered, our savings account, and the credit card debt. And here is the slide that I just started talking about, which is our current inventory. As you see, since 2016, all the way up to pandemic, we had over 20,000 residential single family townhouses, uh, condos. This is all residential properties on the market. And then we had a huge decline and as you can see, this year alone has been a steady decline. So that's one of the challenges that we are all facing, right? Now, these are the people, not necessarily that I prospect all of them consistently, but some of them I am reaching out to consistently or throughout my career that really helped me. So who would be the most suitable sellers in my opinion in today's market? Uh, I like to focus on old expires or canceled for sale by owners, investors or the second home owners, people that needs to downsize 
or empty nesters, divorce people that are going through divorce, and unfortunately that there is a significant percentage of that. Uh, people that are going through financial struggles, so they have either default or gains, and unfortunately debt. Now let's talk about all the expireds. If you're prospecting constant consistently expireds, can you just put in a chat I or me, whichever? I just want to kind of get a feeling of audience, how many out of 60 people are actually doing this type of activity. Perfect. So the reason why I like to focus about old expires versus new expires is because if someone expired in today's market, I believe they are not really motivated because it's very hard. Whatever you price the home today, appreciation is going to catch up. So these people were more than likely above 10% of the market value from very beginning. So there's all, only three reasons why homes don't sell, price, condition, or marketing. Okay? So why I like to focus on old expires, and when I say old expires, I mean even before 2020. I, would, I, I still have the lease since 2016, and I'm calling all those people that still own property. So they have more equity today than they had when they were on the market. We know for a fact that they were motivated at some point. They are not getting a lot of phone calls and they are not getting a lot of attention from real estate agents, unlike the fresh expired listings. And with that said, there is certainly less competition. Now, what are the potential problems that we're going to be facing when we call these people? They lock lower interest rates and potentially their motivation uh, is not the same anymore. So when I reach out to old expired, really the very first thing I ask is if they still own the property, because I want to identify if they still own it. Uh, and then I ask if, if it's still important for them to sell. If they say it's not, I like to get them back in the future and ask, sorry, back in the past and ask them, what was the reason to going on the market to begin with? Right? And uh, that's where we open a conversation. That would be the initial phone call. And of course, I always try to provide the value. I always try to provide the resources. And I hope you all are using a CRM. And in that in CRM, you should, if it's a good CRM, you should have an option to put a CMA campaign basically to send that prospect a market report at least every single month. Now, what am I doing? I'm providing value. I'm giving them an update. Why? Because motivation can always change. I personally have a brevity. That's what I use as my CRM. Uh, but there are a lot of great CRMs out there. Uh, I just hope whichever you have that you're actually using it. Now, here is the free way of finding expired or cancel listings. If you don't want to, Matt, I don't want to invest two, three, four, five hundred dollars in the CRM. Where can we find these homeowners for free? Well, in our AIM, IMAP, we have an MLS search. You go to the listing status and you click expired, not relisted. This is how I started. So I would look for the homes and I would literally just go knock on the door or I would do a skip tracing and try to find their home numbers or cell phones and uh, reach out to them. Well, nowadays it's cell phones. Before home, num home phones were more uh, common, I guess. It's the same concept for expires. Okay. Any questions so far on all the expires before we move into the next segment? And Kevin, if you can help me, there is a, a chat question. Let me know because I'm not looking at chat. It's all good. What I, system I'll, are I'll you using to, right to uh, call? Excuse me? What system are you using to call Vulcan or Red X or? I'm using uh, Vulcan 7 for the data. And what time, of, what time do you call? 
all the expired really anything. No, time. no, what time? Eight to eleven, uh, all day long. When I started my career, full time career, I st I started at uh, eight o'clock sharp, which is the legal time, uh, and uh, and I would call them sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours, all depends how many. Before we used to have way more expires than nowadays. Uh, I'm not calling consistently expires nowadays because I develop database and I help quite a bit of families. Therefore, so a lot of my business right now is uh, my forever clients. Now for sale by owners, any other questions on the expires before we move on? Okay, for sale by owners. So we know they want to sell. Most of them wants to cooperate with the buyer's agent. We can help them with a purchase or refer them to the agent outside the area. And there's quite a bit of uh, for sale by owners that I was never able to help here. They were successful. Uh, I mean, in their eyes, they were successful and most of them actually lose money even after paying our success fee. Uh, but some the ones that were successful and I was able to provide some resources uh, guide them through the process, give them idea. I was still able to connect them with an outside agent from a different area. And uh, that way, not only connect them with someone that I know personally, but also I was able to get rewarded by uh, getting a referral fee. Now, most of them doesn't want to get, uh, they, they don't want to compensate the listing agent. And they're getting quite a bit of attention from the realtors. Now, the main objective here is really understanding the value because when we explain the value, a lot of for sale by owners are going to be open to hiring us. So it's really on us to explain uh, what are all the things and what is the reasons that uh, they should hire us. And I saw that question about do not call east. Nicole, I would ask the broker and I see also ask how much is Brevity. Brevity is around $375. Uh, talk with your broker. I'm very transparent guy. So if you ask me, Mate, do you call, do not call east? Yes, I do. And I spoke with over 16, 17,000 expired uh, listings in the last seven years. And only two of them said they're going to file a complaint. So it's really a risk reward. Uh, I apologize. I make sure, you know, I delete their number, move on, and that's it. So, but again, talk with your broker. Uh, but with the purpose of transparency and integrity, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, uh, which is not necessarily always 100% uh, compliance. Now, where to find for sale by owners? Zillow auto search is great. Like even when I'm looking, now I'm on the market of uh, buying a multifamily for myself as investment. And uh, I set up the search in the areas that I'm looking for multifamily that are for sale by owner. Driving around the neighborhoods and taking different routes is how I was able to find more more signs versus just taking every single route the same day. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, I know it's free. Uh, sometimes I, I'm looking there, I'm not very consistent there, but that's another a great resource where you can find. And then uh, third party services uh, that for, provide for sale by owners and expires and canceled, Red X, Vulcan 7, and they traditionally cost money. Uh, Vulcan 7, is probably the most expensive one. And I know with a one year agreement, I'm paying around 275 to 280, uh, yet it's really investment. Like over first five years, I was able to help over 50 families that didn't have luck, sometimes even with three different agents, they, they couldn't sell. Uh, I was able to meet with them, well, reach out to them, connect, 
find out their goals because always it has to be about them uh, and really ask them questions that uh, are related to their goals and their needs versus, hey, I can sell it, I can list it. And a lot of a lot of families actually told me, Mate, you're one of the rare ones that start the conversation with our motivation versus, uh, versus uh, hey, I can do this or I'm the best. Uh, so I would really encourage you guys make the whatever activity you're doing, if it's a, a phone call, text messages, emails, or you're door knocking, make it about people. Try to understand what are their goals and be honest first and foremost with yourself if you ha can help them. Because I met so many for sale by owners and they tell me what their goals are. And if I know I'm not able to deliver, I'm going to walk away from that opportunity rather than just sign the listing and sit on the market and mislead someone for three to six months potentially. So that's my approach. Any questions on for sale by owners? And if you have a question, please just unmute yourself because I don't see the chat all the time. Uh, so it would be helpful if you guys have any questions so far. No questions? Okay. So let, let's get a little, let's dive deeper in for sale by owner uh, reasoning to hire us. What is the biggest challenge? They always want to save money on the listing side, right? So we have to justify the another X percent commission that uh, that we are charging. So because most for sale, over 90% of for sale by owners I spoke with, they're willing to cooperate with the agent who brings in the buyer. Now, when, when homeowners tells me that, I traditionally ask them, is that in your best interest and what is important about that? So when I ask them what is important about that, they say, most of them say, I want to save money on commission. So I basically ask them, well, what I'm hearing you saying is you want to compensate me for really negotiating against you and bringing, uh, bringing the, the right buyer, right? Yes, great. So if there is a way that I can actually net you the money you need to make this move successful, you would hire me by now, right? So I'm already assuming that they would do something they didn't even say they would. But if things make sense, would you do it? Yes. Why? Because a lot of them are more focused about our compensation and our success fee versus what we can do for them. And a lot of them get more money than they expected to get on their own. Any questions so far on the conversation? No. Okay. Let's move into the next one. So investors, a lot of my business is working with investors. Now for investors, the great thing is that most of them are not aware of appreciation, especially if they are out of the area. Uh, a lot of the investors I connected with in the past I was able to help them secure more investment properties and help them continue building wealth through real estate. They are not getting uh, a lot of attention from realtors because it is a very special niche. Uh, I do like to talk about 6% rule and uh, having a higher level of conversations, which includes investing in different wealth buckets, which includes saving money on taxes, which I understand a little more things than just real estate. Uh, back to 6% rule, I really want to explain that if if investor has, let's say, $200,000 worth of equity, but they're only getting 10000 net a year, that means they're getting 5% back on their equity. So I make sure I ask them questions like, what is your rent roll? How much are you netting from the property? That way I can make the investment analysis for them completely free and let them, let them know, hey, if you're not getting 6% or more, I believe I can find you a better deal. If that's the case, would you be open to get together or meet in the Zoom if they're out of state? 
most of them are going to say yes. Why? Because investors care, care about return on their investment. So I encourage you, take, take classes to understand more investors, take classes, even commercial classes to understand uh, vocabulary when it comes to their language, uh, read more than just the real estate, read about economy, look at the stock market, uh, understand how you can help because there are people that I actually connect them with my financial advisor because stock market might be a better option for them uh, in the long, in the medium or longer run what they have now, especially uh, for investors that have the same tenants for 5, 10, 15 years. Traditionally, those are way below market value rents. So the ultimate goal is on really helping people uh, continue building wealth. Now, the cons is getting data, which usually costs money, and having a higher level of conversations. And that's one of the reasons I did mention taxes and different investment buckets, uh, and just really knowing your numbers. Now, where to find them? Remind has been a great resource under absentee, and they have two different categories in and out of state. That's where you can uh, that's where you can get the list of investors. And then I'm up again. Tag search, owner occupied, you put no. Traditionally, I have a zip code and I just look at one zip code. I download the list. I got all the names, uh, addresses, mailing address, and then how I get a phone call, how I get the phone numbers or emails. We're gonna talk about that uh, in a bit, okay? Any questions about uh, about investors? Please unmute yourself, guys. Would it be good to find out if they have more than one property? A am I able to find out if they have more? Yeah, would it be good to find out that they own multiple properties? I asked them. And, and a lot of investors, I, I mean, I, I don't target investors that own multiple properties. I target people that own at least one investment property. And in conversation, I ask them a lot of questions. And a lot of them have commercial properties or potentially they have business that wants to sell. Well, I'm not a commercial agent and I'm not the business broker, those two are completely different type of real estate that I know I cannot service someone at the highest possible level. So I connect them with a commercial agent or business broker. And again, you ask for referral fee, you help that family, you know someone is gonna take great care of them and ultimately gonna get them uh, best results. Why? Because for me, it's more important uh, for them to get a best possible results than for me to try to service them and potentially lose their wealth or piece of their wealth. It's not worth 100% of my commission. I usually get 25% for referral and I, you know, peace of mind doesn't have price. What system but, do, you, do you use to calculate their ROI? Which play? So, sorry, the question is, how do I calculate ROI? Yeah, which system? Yeah. I either do manually or, I mean, I, I do have Excel spreadsheet that I use when I look at my own investments and it's already have 10% management, 5% uh, uh, vacancy and 3% maintenance in it by okay. default. It's really the spreadsheet and let me do this. Here's my email. Whoever wants the spreadsheet, again, I'm open book. Uh, I'll send it to you. It's nothing fancy, just few formulas uh, that actually my friend from Alabama gave to me because I'm I'm investing in that state. Uh, so, yeah, feel free to send me an email, and uh, by end of today, I will send you uh, the calculator. Any other questions on investors for sale by owners or expireds before we move on?
You guys are shy, quiet. I might ask I this question. question. Oh, go ahead, ask it. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, so um, is it Matt? Is that how you say your name? Mate. Mate, uh -huh. so Mate, what is your approach when you reach out to the investor? How, what's your initial opening line? What might that be? Uh, Leah, like, right? Yes, I'm Leah. Mm -hmm. Hey Leah, this is Mate reaching out to you because I noticed you have investment property in uh, 33186 uh, and I'm reaching out because we have a huge demand and I'm just curious to find out if you're either thinking about selling or maybe you need a investment analysis or maybe you're thinking about expanding your portfolio. <clears throat> Is there anything I can do to help? Okay, simple enough. Thank yeah. you. My mm -hmm. pleasure. And then I ask them, for, if I don't have their email, I ask them for the email uh, mm -hmm. and whatever they say, it's perfectly fine. Uh, right. We shouldn't be attached to the outcome of one conversation. Of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Collect the data and try to provide as much value as possible in the mm -hmm. long run. That's really the name of the game because I believe we are in relationship building business, not Absolutely. transactional. So who else has a question? Great question. Hi, I have a question. Hi, um, Mate. Thank you for organizing and facilitating this for all of us here. Uh, I have two questions. So my first question is, I know that you had mentioned earlier about the for sale by owners of um, showing up to the seller's home. How prepared should agents be in door knocking on for sale by owner homes? Should Great we know about the said. property? You know, should we have a listing uh, agreement ready on hand? Should we have the RPR? Should we have the CMA? Like how prepared should an agent be? Great question, Esther. And with full transparency, Kevin is the one who organized all this. I'm just- oh, uh, thank you. I, I'm just the person that, that delivers the content, but Kevin is really yes. the, the person for all the credits. Thank you, uh, Kevin. So, just so I better understand you, Esther, is this when you already have the conversation with them or you just randomly door knocking? Randomly. Randomly door knocking? Okay, perfect. I, I, I have zero preparation there. I simply open the conversation, find out what are they looking to achieve, uh, trying to understand their you know, motivation, where are they going, uh, what's taking them there, what's the ideal timeline, uh, if they're cooperating with the agent who brings in the buyer and if, if it's, you know, what is the reason they don't want to hire a professional like us sure. and, uh, and that's it. And if, so, they, if so, they really, go ahead. No, like I wanted to know what's the initial of like, hey, I'm knocking on your door. Am I supposed to know that you're selling this house? Like what's that initial well, if there is a for sale by owner sign, then hey, I'm a professional agent in the area and I just want to, you know, I saw your for sale sign and I decided to come into Roos myself and find out, you know, what is your goal? If, if you see it online, hey, I drive by here all the time. I saw you were advertising on Zillow and I decided to stop by and just see how's everything moving along for you. But I never like, rarely that I door, I actually never door knock someone that's advertising on zero. Why? Because traditionally they put a phone number on zero. So I try to connect with them via phone call. If I just see a random for sale sign and I look at my phone and it's not advertised anywhere, that's when I go and I door knock. I'm already there. But I do not do any preparation at that initial uh initial conversation if that was your question you know I've... i have an input mate yes um so last weekend i stopped to two for sale by owners it was intentional and like you i don't do much preparation because we don't know what that conversation is going to be yes i have a general idea of market values in the area um 
How, however, I did communicate with both of them prior to going to the properties. And for me, it was very conversational. I don't, I didn't go with a set agenda. My main uh, mindset is, hey, I just want to take, I want to take a look at the property to see if, if it may fit a buyer that I have. Because yes, we know with short inventory, it's very possible that you may have a buyer that is, um, I mean, that the property can work for. But two, the face-to-face -face is an opportunity to see if we can, or to see if I can participate in the transaction, either by having a buyer or listing it at, at some point. Um, and I've maintained com communication with both of, of them. So I haven't, like I said, it was last weekend. So there was no great pressure for me to, to list the property, even though it would be great to do so. I just wanted to get face to face and somehow build some kind of connection in the event they decide to use a realtor that I would be considered. So, uh, Adele, that's a great point. And what exactly is your question though I, and i want to make sure i answer your question before i bring something up that you just mentioned oh no i didn't have a question i just wanted okay. to provide feedback on esther because she wanted to know how prepared nice. she should be but for for me personally um when i interact with a for sale by owner the most preparation I do is have an idea of values of that particular property, but I don't do anything beyond that because my main goal in that point is just to get face to face and yes, take a look at the property and to somehow um, at some point in the near future be a resource or listed. Yes. And I have had two actually um opportunities where i was in the listing agent one of them i did end up bringing a buyer and the other one the for sale by owner went under contract but like you said hey why are you paying the other agent to negotiate against you so they asked me if i could navigate that the transaction and i just charged a flat fee Oh, great point. And, and what you also mentioned is face-to-face. -face. So when we are born, we connect with people by looking at each other. Then we learn how to talk, and then we learn how to write text, send emails. And it looks like we're doing everything backwards. We prioritize text and emails. Then we, okay, let's make a phone call or let's have a conversation. And then let's move face-to-face. I believe that it's in our nature as humans to connect the best when we are face to face or when we send a video message. What I often do is like, I send people a video message. Why? Because I want them to see me. I want them to understand who's the, you know, who's the face behind the voice on the phone call. I don't really prospect with, by texting with people or sending emails. That's where I just provide value. I'm not looking to connect with someone that way. But most agents that I speak, or when I go to different offices and I teach classes, most of them prefer to do texts or emails. Yet in human nature, oh, I believe it's always the best way to connect when we see each other. So that's a great point, and, and I wanted to bring that up. Uh, so let's move forward and we are going to have a Q&A, uh, move forward with investors. Now, downsizing. People, and I'm actually helping a great family that are my friends. Uh, I know them for quite some time. They're almost buying the next property cash. So interest rates today are not really affecting them. So they have more equity. They can potentially purchase home with cash or with a very small loan, and they don't care about interest rates. Downsizing would be the ideal sellers in today's market. 
Now, I meet a lot of them, and a lot of them have been in the homes for 20 plus years. They raise their family there. So there is emotional attachment, and traditionally, they need more time to get ready for the market. So it's very, I believe it's very important to surround yourself with professionals in different industries. So I have a service that literally comes, pick up all, all, all the things that people are willing to throw away. And that's how they help them declutter. Because if they're downsizing, are they, they're getting into the smaller place, which means that their current inventory more than likely is not gonna fit. So either we're going to buy the smaller place and rent a storage unit that can be quite expensive for things that you're not using, or we can just get rid of the things that we need. So the very first thing is, okay, here's the phone number of the person that can help you get rid of anything you want. Then having a handyman, having a, a pressure cleaning company, uh, I pay for stager always unless the probably is complete gut job and like there's nothing to be staged, I'm really selling it at the land value. Uh, but if there is more room for the profit that can happen for this family, I'm going to go ahead and invest that. Or I'm going to connect them with a professional uh, in a different industry that I know can help them get better results. Now, where to find them? In IMAP, you can look for the people that own homes 15 plus years. Uh, I use before Rebo Gateway. It is subscription-based uh, program. Or you can host downsizing seminars. That I have idea. I have a friend that is doing that in uh, New Jersey. They're the top team in New Jersey. And they're doing that on a very high level. But you start with something small. So those are just... I mean, two first two things is actually things I use. The third thing is really idea. If someone has a great idea on executing perfect downsizing seminar, go for it. Uh, whatever you do in anything that we just mentioned, the number one thing is stay consistent. I often hear agents complain, well, this is not working for me. Well, for how long you have been trying to call, let's say, expired for two weeks well, of course for two weeks i mean we don't start walking when we're two weeks old right it takes some time so give whatever you try i suggest at least give yourself six months six months six to nine months would be the ideal uh time frame to see if something is working for you or not any questions on downsizing Okay. Divorces. I had a good amount of families that I help in this situation. They are highly motivated to sell and you can help both parties after the sale. So either they're looking to buy or rent sometimes. Uh, you really can help them in many ways. Now, what are some of the challenges? Traditionally finding the mutual agreement, staying neutral, and not taking anything personal because I had, you know, I had a spouse, one spouse thinking that I'm acting on behalf of other or just going. It's very important to tell them, listen, guys, I'm a professional here. That's why you hire me. And I'm acting on both of your behalf and I'm representing both of you. Now, I used to pay for the Rebo Gateway data. That's how I obtained the list of people that are going through this unfortunate time. I mean, I went through divorce myself. It's, I know it's not fun, yet the key question, anything you decide to do is, do you care for people and do you want to put their interest above yours? Why? Because I guarantee out of 57,000 agents that there's unfortunately some people that are going to prioritize their own interest. So... This is really coming from contribution and trying to help someone that is going through either a happy or not so happy time. Uh, I know building relationship with divorce attorney, 
my divorce attorney connect me with few families and also getting the lease from the courthouse. I never done it. I know the concept of it. Uh, again, it takes time, uh, but those are some of the free resources that you can use. Now, default or liens. Now, these people really need help because they are going through something that no one is really happy about. Uh, it's really about saving their money because they don't know, uh, you know, if they lose the house, many times they're not going to get anything. And it's the niche is very specific. Uh, cons is that we get sensitive to talk about our financial situations. And a lot of them already say that they know someone who can save them. And unfortunately, my experience in with uh, some of the attorneys in that field is not the best. I had families that I tried to help and they were relying on attorney and opposing house, not getting absolutely anything. And then I, I, I personally, I don't feel good about that. Um, now we can find, there's quite a bit of resources that we can uh, get. I'm up under foreclosure search. Uh, Remind is another free resource. Rebo Gateway again, and then Miami Dade Auction. This is their website. You can see what are the auctions in the next 30, 60 days, and uh, try to connect with those people and try to say, you know, a lot of these auctions are going to be stopped. Something is going to happen. Yet, some of them unfortunately go through the auction and they end up losing the property. And then I also use a prop stream, which auto investors are using this uh, program. It's not the cheapest one, yet it does give you a good result in my experience. And that's unfortunately, uh, it's part of living. Uh, usually beneficiaries are the ones that are motivated and they always have an option to sell or rent. And we're going back to that 6% rule that I mentioned when we spoke about investors. Now the cons are, it's extremely sensitive situation uh, and you should be familiar with the probate process or uh, really have a good people around you that are familiar with the probate process. Uh, Remind is a great resource, again, free, notice of a trustee sale, trust and probate attorney. So again, build a relationship with attorneys and then uh, back to PropStream which is a paid subscription and you pay per contact. Uh, now, ways to contact homeowners, and this is really the last segment before the Q&A. Uh, I like to phone call. Uh, I use the different system for skip tracing. So in IMAP, I, in any of these system, I uh, download the CSV file and then I send to, I send to the third party uh, company that is doing skip tracing and that's anywhere from eight, 10, 12 cents per contact. So sometimes in a week I invest 200 and I get almost 2000 contacts. And I have that, you know, 2000 contacts can last you for two, three weeks if you're actively calling people. Uh, you can door knock. A lot of these uh, skip tracing programs are gonna provide an emails. So you put them again in the drip campaign, you start sending the market report. So those are more active approach that I personally like. And then you have some uh, passive ones, which is mailers or digital marketing. Uh, I personally don't invest in any mailers uh, and I'm not a digital marketing guru, that's for sure. So if you came for, uh, for any digital marketing idea, I'm going to have to disappoint you today. So those are the way to connect with homeowners. Uh, what questions do we have? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, what is the best way to find a fix and flip? Which route do you do? Fix and clip, flip really, I, I would say prop stream. If there is like a one place to use one program, I would say PropStream, which I believe is 99 a month. And then uh, there are some additional features that uh, I invest in. Uh, and I believe their skip tracing is either 10 or 12 cents. Uh, 
per contact. Now, I do subscribe to a lot of uh, wholesale lists. I did two flips that I got. Well, actually, only one flip I did from the wholesaler. Uh, but you also have to understand that wholesaler can easily earn 20, 30 percent up the homeowner price. Uh, so if you are able to skip the middle person, which would be the wholesaler, the room for profit would be much greater, not only for you, but also for that family. Great question, though. Thank you. So prop stream uh, is something that uh, I'm using and I know a lot of investors are using. Hey, Mate, I had a question, uh, just going back to investors. Uh, I just wanted to ask, like, what criteria do you use when searching uh, which investors to call? Like, how many years of ownership or how much equity do they have? Like, what what criteria do you use? For investors, I'm I'm looking for anyone that owns a second home. It, it, I'm not looking really for the years of ownership of that second home. I'm just looking for people that own uh, more than one property. Or in IMAP, that their mailing address is different than the property address. So that's my objective, really to connect with them. And a lot of my really good friends now are investors that I came across by cold calling. Why? Because we build that relationship and they are all looking for the deals. Uh, one advice I can give you, Chris, and everybody else is don't work just for your commission. Like listing the home should be the last thing in my books like the first thing is like does it make sense for me to buy it like if this family has a goal and for some families time is more important than money that's rare yet it is happening so if time is more important than money then can i buy it can i wholesale it can i flip it can i buy and hold it and then can i list it and most of people are stuck here they're like i just want to list it there's so much more opportunity that we have in this career than just listing home. I mean, listing homes is great. Like, don't take me wrong. I'm coming. I work in my country for three, four hundred dollars a month. Like commission checks that we get here are insane. So I'm humbly saying listing is one way of doing things, yet there's more like have have a relationship with developers. So if you find a property that is potentially a development see hey i'll bring you the deal what type of partnership we can do like i had a i had a luxury builder that he ended up uh, purchasing a property for the land value from me and now he's giving me multiple listings every listing is over a million why because I keep feeding him with deals. Like I keep, whenever I come across a land deal in his desired area or for some other people in their desired area, hey, I'm giving you this exclusive off-market opportunity. Are you interested? So it's like ongoing relationship with them. Great question. Thank you. Appreciate it. Who else has a question? Did we miss, miss anything in the chat? Proxy, I do not use proxy. Did we have any questions that we didn't answer? Somebody asked if you do any mailing. If we do what? Mailing, mailers. Mailing? I don't. I don't. Uh, it's a, it's investment. It is passive in my books. Mailing works, but consistent mailing works. And I know people that have been in the industry for quite some time that are sending 20, 30 mail, 20, 30,000 mailers every single month. Yet you have to commit, you have to be consistent, and you have to really provide a value. You can't be said, I believe you can't be sending a market report every single month or a apple pie recipes now that i don't like an apple pie I, i'm just saying figure out if you're going to do mailers take some courses find out what are the best practices for farming and stay consistent that's beyond six months like don't expect in six months to 
to get results. Uh, what do I use for skip tracing? Uh, prop screen and Rebo Gateway are my go-to because I have subscriptions. Uh, right now, I don't have Rebo Gateway anymore. I made a pause on that, but I use Rebo Gateway. Uh, but PropStream is my go-to for uh, for skip tracing. So, and and many times I I got six, seven, eight numbers for one address. Um, I start deleting the landlines because it's really I'm not gonna call all the landlines. Most people don't use it anymore, so I I just focus on the cell phones. I was just curious about your. Um videos that you say you send out sometimes to the for sale by owners i like your concept of relationship building and i was just wondering what do you what what do you, what would you say in one of your videos for instance for for sale by owner for sale by, well for everybody uh, mm -hmm. i send the videos when i already schedule appointments okay i send them hey leah thank you so much for the opportunity to meet with you and talk more about your goals I look forward to meeting you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so then thank you for that. I guess I thought you were saying that you didn't really plan when you go for the for sale by owners that you just drop by, but so you do kind of reach out to them before you go. If I set appointment with them over the phone, I, mm -hmm. I don't like what what we were talking talking about earlier was when we meet when I just see the for sale sign and yes. they're not advertised online, I just yes. want I door knock. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no, like, but the video messages I send is really to either my database, which yes. by the way, database should be the, the number one thing that you focus on, unless you just moved here. Yes. Like I started this, I'm not from here. I, I decided, okay, I'm gonna call expires and for sale by owners. Mm -hmm. But if you're here, call people that already know you, trust you, and like you. Okay. It's much easier to serve them than try to really earn the trust from someone that doesn't even know you. I get that. It's possible, yes. It takes time, though. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Four more minutes, guys, unless you guys simply don't have any questions. Ask I, want to, I want to thank you for the um, for the presentation. My pleasure. So when you were calling, how many experts or first of all owners were you getting a month or whatever? So when I was calling, how many a month? If first of all owners expired. Certainly less since 2020. That's when I really before I would call fresh expired every single morning i many times even on sundays no, i mean how many listings are you getting where where are you getting oh in total i don't know uh, well, i mean eight plus a year 10 plus i think the most i ever signed was 12 or 13 out of 32 listings i had like three years in a row i signed 32 listings uh so one third of them would be expired for me most what works is calling expires. For sale by owners takes more nurture, more time. Uh, when I started, I went through some life challenges. Uh, I needed uh, to start producing fairly quickly. So I decided to focus more on expires. And so what's your biggest challenge though when you're working with the expired? Biggest challenge right now or biggest challenge when I started? Well, I guess you could say now, now basically what's the biggest challenge? Mm -hmm. Well, there's not many. And mm -hmm. with full transparency, I haven't been focusing as much as calling expires as I did when I started a career. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, a a every year you help 20 to 30 families mm -hmm. or seven years you like you build your database so my phone is definitely ringing more now than it was five years ago excellent why because well, people are calling me mm -hmm. um, 
but it's really time on task. Mm -hmm. And so how long have you been in the industry? Seven years, full time. Years. Very nice. I, Thank you. How yeah. far back did you say you were calling on the expired listings? Sorry, Rose, what was the question? I'm sorry. How far back um, do you uh, call on the expired listings? Like three months, four months, how, how, how old? Are you ready for the answer? Yes. I have a data since June, 2016. <laughs> now okay. the great thing is that anyone can buy the data. Uh, Katya, uh, I have been using BombBomb -Bomb to send videos uh, because it has a great uh, tracking system. Uh, Jen Neal, I hope I pronounced, what does a typical day look like as far as scheduling your calls and other tasks in your business? Well, I'm reading a book right now called 10X is easier than 2X and says we can only have three priorities every single day. One of the, like, we're in the business of really connecting with people and in lead generation business. So I don't get tied to designing anything related to design, transaction, any tasks that are not my top 20%, I try to leverage that and I pay someone else to do it. Uh, so my day-to-day -day is not the same like my day five years ago. I still wake up early between four and 5 a.m. I work on myself uh, physically, mentally, and then uh, I start uh, prospecting or connecting with people. And that's my morning. That's how I feel by 12. I mean, there were days that the most I ever set was five listing appointments and it wasn't even like 11 a.m. And then there are a few days that you don't set any. It just, that's the nature of the game. So, I don't believe there is like a one perfect day that is gonna work for everybody. Like there is a great book called The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agent. There's so many great practices and habits, yet not everything is working for me. Like I'm not journaling, I'm not consistent in journaling. Uh, so you have to try things, give it time and see if it's working for you. If it's not, move on. And eventually it's it's ongoing process. One more last question. Anyone? Kevin, I think. Okay. I did I cover everything in the no, everything was as far as I know. I'm not a I'm not a practicing real estate professional, but it seemed pretty thorough. Well, quick question. Will this video be available? Um, will you guys be sending this video to our emails? Of course. So I have the full registration list. Typically what happens is as soon as uh, Zoom notifies me that the video is ready for download, I download it and um, I don't, I can't promise you that I'll have it in your inbox tomorrow, but I will have it in your inbox by the end of this week. Appreciate you, Kevin. Anytime. Mate, we knew this was going to be a phenomenal class. Uh, your retention rate was fantastic. Thank you so much for your time and expertise. Look forward to seeing you soon, buddy. And for the Thank rest you. of you, uh, remember, we do have, um, normally we do it every other week, but um, we were a little late to the game this year. So we will have classes every Wednesday at one. I can't say for the entire rest of the year, uh, but for a long time coming. So next week um, is all about secrets for real estate success. Um, this guy is a great success story who's teaching the class. His name is Daniel Fleischman. He's a coach and uh, and a, he works with a lot of uh, real estate professionals in the area but he'll be telling you some of the secrets that he has. And I think it'll be a really good class to build off of this class because I know he has some other great ways of outreach and, and securing listings and business as well. So um, that will be next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Uh, I will not be sending you the link in the chat right now, but when I send you the video, I will send you the registration link as well. I hope you register for that, la for that next class. You'll be in for another great treat. And just to let you know, let's start conditioning ourselves every Wednesday at 1 p.m. We'll be right here on the Zoom, and we hope you can join us. Um, if nobody has any other final questions, we wish you the best. We want you to take this information and use it to the best of our ability. 
and make Miami YPN proud that we do have the best realtors in the entire real estate association here at Miami Realtors. So make us proud. Take this information. We can't wait to see you next Wednesday. Everybody have a great day. Take care. Goodbye. Thank Bye -bye. you, Kevin. Give up on my way home, oh, yeah Hey, uh, wouldn't it be crazy? Uh, hey, uh, oh, don't you still amaze me? Uh, hey, wouldn't it be crazy? Uh, hey, uh, oh, don't you still amaze uh, me?